those costs for you to come, what is that based off of? Is it weight? We basically have a single price for all the horses that we can handle. We can handle up to about 1,400 pound horse. 1,400, and so that's just a flat fee. What does that run, if you don't mind? $2,300. As of right now, $2,300. Right mm -hmm. okay. okay, all right. Yes. And so that's something that could actually be included in a will or in a care plan or something where those costs are covered by your will if that's something you put in. I know our vet had been setting money aside mm -hmm. so that she was prepared for euthanasia, the, the rendering, all of that. Cremation, not render. Cremation. And so yes. can you explain to us the difference? Yeah. Rendering, they take the horse and basically cover it in a lime type product and return it to the ground. Okay. okay that way. Okay. Cremation, we take the full body horse and we place it inside a, a machine that weighs 50 tons. Wow. It's four and a half feet wide by 10 feet deep by about four and a half feet high, the chamber. And that sits about four feet off the ground. And we place the full body horse into that chamber with a forklift on a plywood bed that we put the horse on when we take it out of our trailer at our shop put it on the plywood bed, pick the whole plywood bed up and put that into the chamber. Then we, it takes about 10 hours from that time once we get the horse into the chamber. And it's, the machine runs at about 1600 to 1800 degrees for 10 hours. People here, when I hear, or when I say the price of the cost of cremation, they don't understand. Sure. This is 10 hours worth of time. Yep. This machine, you have a gas grill at your house that probably has twenty to 40,000 British thermal units, BTUs. Mm -hmm. This machine that we use is 5 million BTUs. Mm -hmm. So it's not inexpensive for me to run. No, absolutely not. And sure. This is a long process and horse bones are hard. Right. Yeah, that's the reason they can run so beautifully and not break a leg every sure. time they step up or jump over something. Yeah. And then you offer other services along with that. I know with Coco, I think Genevieve got a hoof print in some sort of ceramic or something. We do, do a hoof print in clay. Okay, clay. We actually will save as much of the tail hair, the mane hair, the forelock hair as you want. Mm -hmm. um, I had the most recent client, and this is a brand new item that we're working with, took a small clipping of the mane hair, the forelock hair, and I sent it to one of the companies that I work with, and they embedded the hair in silver. So she now has a necklace that's, I guess, the size of, oh, my fingernail. It's got her horse hair inside the sil inside the liquid silver state. What is it? Liquid state. They put it in there and put it on a, she wears it on the necklace. She will be wearing that on the necklace. It's supposed to be coming in this week, I hope. They have a lot of cool, like, oh, yeah. stuff you can do with yeah. horse hair. Yeah. I've seen pottery now. With the horse hair woven into it, mm -hmm. oh, wow. yeah, burned into the yep. the glaze. Mm -hmm. you know. Keychains. Yeah. I had a hat band made with with my Mikey D's tail. Yeah. yeah, a lot of cool stuff where you can kind of keep a piece of them. Yeah. I recommend that to anybody. We also do numerous or offer numerous options with the ashes. Okay. So if you want jewelry made with ashes incorporated in the jewelry, we can get that done. Necklaces, rings. Oh, wow. Um, okay. We have little key fobs that are hollow that we put the ashes inside the key fobs. Okay. Those are expensive. A lot of these things are shown on our website, and I'm not going to do the commercial. But, <laughs> right, right. But just, but we have, but they're good options to yeah. have. Right, and people we to have, know about. We work with a number of different artists all over the country who will take ashes and incorporate them into it paperweights, mm -hmm. table oh, wow. globes, that sort of thing that have all different kinds of colors and ashes incorporated in that that are absolutely beautiful. Um, wow. That, yeah, you start getting more and more expensive as things go sure. along. Sure. But, right. you know, these things, you were talking about having a will made mm -hmm. saying certain things are to be done. We have pre-need forms that mm -hmm. you can go online and fill out a pre-need form so that all these decisions are made prior to that and you know oh, basically wow. what you're going to be. Because you know, in the moment of 
dealing with it, it's mm -hmm. hard as we know for, for people Certainly. and of course our, our animals to be grieving and dealing with the reality of, of the loss, then having to make decisions, it's so hard. It's the worst time to make a decision. Right? Well, that's why with college. So in our boarding agreement, in our standard boarding agreement, mm -hmm. I need to know in advance if your horse colics and the vet says surgery is recommended, yes or no. Because if I can't reach you and it's midnight and your phone is off, I need to know what you want so that I can act on your behalf. And everyone goes, well, I don't know. Okay, you don't have to know. But before your horse comes, I just need a yes or a no. You can change your mind at any time. But if I can't reach you, worst case scenario, yes or no. It's a terrible thing to have to think about. But I don't want to make that decision for you. Right. I can't make that decision for you. All I can do is execute your wishes if I can't reach you. Right. Same with decision. that. Right. <laughs> Very expensive decision. Right. You know? And that's also a decision that you might want to incorporate in your boarding agreement if your horse you come to yeah. farm here and your horse is down and you can't you're out of town. Yeah. What do you want me to do with Yep, your well that's baby? true too. Yeah. Yeah, that is a good point too if, and, if yeah. yeah. What are the decisions for the remains. Another amendment. Well, but it, but they're important right. to know. These well, are important it, conversations to have. And especially as a, you know, being the barn owner, right? Um, and you can't get a hold of somebody. Uh, it's all stuff for you to know as well as for me to think about. You know, if I'm not here, right? You know, what what do I want you to do, or do I have something already pre need already set up? Now you Sorry. can already can you prepay like you can like for a funeral? Sure. Okay. I'm happy to take your money in, yeah. <laughs> in any form. <laughs> just like attorneys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking we like where I'd take my dog for daycare and boarding uh -huh. in the agreement we had to say what what the amount we're willing to spend for emergency dog services is without okay. them having to like if they can't contact us we can go up for this amount. Oh that's a fantastic so that's smart yeah. too. That might work for, um, yeah, yeah, for a lot too. of people. Sure. Sure. Of course, they have my credit card on file. You probably right. don't have your credit card. I don't, but cards, you our could. vet does. Yeah. When you board here, you call the vet, you get set up, you give her your credit card. That way, if there's any emergency that comes up with your horse, mm -hmm. she can handle it. Right. If you can't be reached. And as a person that would be inheriting a horse, I mean, what conversation would you recommend the horse owner have with the person that's going to say, you know, I'm going to leave my horse to you, or I'm going to leave my cat to you, or I'm going to leave my dog to you? Is there any... Anything you would recommend in the conversation? Yeah, I mean, I think something that people don't always understand is it's not a contract with this person. They're not obligated to do it just because okay. you put them in, in the document, whether it's a will or a trust. Um, so definitely don't surprise someone with it. It's the same thing, same conversation I have with people about guardianship for their children. You don't want to surprise someone with that. <laughs> right. um, so have a conversation and make sure, first of right. all, that they're willing to do it. Um, obviously, you know, dogs are a little different than horses. Most people can figure out how to keep a dog. Um, people that aren't horse people are going to struggle with even knowing what to do. Like my husband knows a lot more about horses now than he did when, when we met. But, you know, take someone who has never owned a horse, that's probably not going to be your best choice. And luckily, I mean, most people that have horses have a good group of horse friends. Um, so I would say choose, you know, choose from there. Make sure they're willing to do it tell them what you're doing don't keep it a secret like if you are leaving them ten thousand dollars to take care of the horse tell them that you know <laughs> so they're not not wondering oh god how am I going to pay for this horse and you know I think it's hard to put specifically like outline exactly what you want someone to do and remember too the will goes through probate at the court and then it's kind of done there's no police that are going to follow sure. up with the people and say hey did you two years after this person died did you you know give Sammy three carrots on his birthday or something like that. Like they're not going to do that. I'll just haunt them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'll well, be the police. Option. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, have a conversation so they understand like right. what your wishes are. Like you know, I've talked to my husband. Obviously, if I pass away, he gets everything. And I said, you know, you can do this with this horse, this with this horse. This one never leaves. Um, sure. You're just going to figure out how to pay for him. If you don't have the money, get another job. Like, yeah. I, don't, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, but yeah, I mean, he kind of knows. Like we're keeping this one, and you can lease her out, but right. you can't right. sell her. Yeah, that right. kind of thing, and it's just, you know, obviously someone you trust enough to put in that role in the document, you hope is going to do as you ask without, you know, an itemized bullet point list in your will of what you would want. Sure, so, right. definitely. Yeah. What about in the event of accident, injury, whatever, here's what I want done for me health-wise, how important would you say that that is doing what we do? 
I think everybody, it's important for everybody, even if you didn't ride horses, people True. get in car accidents, fall, you know, fall yep. down, all kinds of things. Um, so yeah, there's really like two basic healthcare documents that we generally do, a healthcare power of attorney where you're putting someone in place officially to make healthcare decisions for you when you can't. Um, and then there's also the advanced directive or living will where you're making specific decisions about times when you might want life prolonging measures withheld or withdrawn. Um, yeah, unfortunately, you know, terrible injuries can happen with riding or with anything sure. um, and you don't want to leave your family members hanging like what would they have wanted I have no idea you know especially young people it's hard to get them interested sure. in doing those plans and it isn't common I mean it's not common for young people to die it's not common for young people to you know have terrible injuries um, but it does happen and you know it's an insurance policy what I've told people is you know you have insurance for your car you have insurance for your house how many people have had their house burned down but you still have insurance for yep. it um, you know, death is the one thing that no, none of us are going to avoid. So why not put a you know insurance policy in place, so to speak, with a trust or a will? Um, same thing with healthcare. I mean, some people maybe will go through life without ever needing to use a document like that, but most people probably will have an instance where it would be helpful to have something like that in place. So I think it's super important for all age groups. And it, like I said, the younger crowd is harder to get interested in it. Sure. Yeah, my kids did not understand why they had to do it. Well, they did, because I'm your mom. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, it's important. If something happens to you and you can't make a decision, I need to be able to say, this is what they want. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that unless you tell me what you want. Right? Yeah. Well, one other thing to think about, too, is um, children, that when they turn 18, mm -hmm. um, parents think they, they forget that this is now a legal adult. They right. think they have access to all the information, that they're making the decisions. Which yep. They may be doing that, but they may not have access to all the information that they want uh, without documentation in yep. place. So we actually we try to do a special, like, twice a year where we do discounted documents, like a health care power of attorney and a financial power of attorney for young adults, Perfect. Mm -hmm. people who just turned 18 and are, you know, shipping off to college, um, yeah. it's things that people don't think about, and again, not common that you need it, but if you need it but and don't you don't have it, you're going to be, you know, it's not going to be a good situation, yeah. so that's something to think about too, absolutely, young adults.